Hello my fellow weirdos, my name is Marie McWilliams, welcome back to my channel. For today's video we are going to be doing a book review of the classic gothic horror The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As I said for today's video, we're going to be doing a book review of The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. Before I launch into that, if you guys could please subscribe to my channel, I would really, 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 really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the bell button so you get a notification every time I post new content. And if you could give this video a thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know the type of things you would like me to read or include, or if you have any horror recommendations, I would love to hear from you guys. But let's launch into today's scheduled programming, shall we? So. The Turn of the Screw, the reason I, I never really got around to reading this, even though it is known as a fantastic gothic classic. Um, but what gave me the kick up the bum to finally do it is um, Netflix. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen The Haunting of Hill House. Um, it is their adaptation of Shirley Jackson's book by the same name. And I've done a video about it, the book versus the show. Um, I love the book, I loved the show, and when I heard that season two was going to be The Haunting of Bly House, the house in this particular book, and an adaptation of this one, then I knew that I finally had to get around to reading this classic gothic piece of fiction. Um, and I was not disappointed, and I'm even more excited for season two of The Haunting, well, Haunting of Bly House as it will be, on Netflix. But if you're unfamiliar with the storyline, it is basically about a governess who is sent to a country house called Bly House in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the English countryside, to take care of two wards, a young boy and a young girl. And there she begins to experience paranormal happenings, things that um, scare her that uh, would suggest that there are the dead, that they are lurking around, and she believes that they may be after the children. So it's about her trying to kind of protect the kids from these supernatural elements. And um, it apart, it's sort of like mainly her, the housekeeper, and the two kids. Um, you learn through the book that the previous governess died in suspicious circumstances, as did, as did another member of staff, a male member of staff, and those two were lovers, and they both died in mysterious circumstances, and she believes they are the ones that are now haunting the children. So that's the sort of storyline. Um, it's a really great... It's just, it is a classic for a reason. It's incredibly atmospheric, and it creates this ever-building tension with uh, Henry James is fantastic with language and it just creates this sort of constant kind of build up, build up that you know it's leading to something and you know it ain't going to be good. And uh, he creates this sort of rich, I don't I, how do you describe it, this just this rich atmospheric like surroundings in the book. I, I genuinely felt like I was in Bly House. You know, I could hear the creaking floorboards. I could see the people, the spirits looking in the window. It was just very, mm. and the whole thing is actually set um, as a story being told. At the start of the book, we have a gentleman, they're all telling, um, in a, at a party, they're all telling ghost stories. And he reads from a ghost story of a woman that he knew who turns out to be the governess. Um, and she wrote it in first hand, her experience, so she could tell people what happened. And he said it's the most terrifying thing he's ever read. And he reads it to the people at the party. So the whole thing is told to us as a story being told, if that makes sense. And I think that in immediately makes it more immersive. It's not that we're like third parties observing from the outside like you would with a television show. We are being directly spoken to by the narrator, by the protagonist. She is telling us her story. She is weaving this tale for us and telling us all about these terrors, these awful spirits. And that immediately, I think, draws you straight in and makes it just so much more atmospheric, so much more immersive. I really loved that about it. Um, the crux of the kind of... <laughs> the What it's sort of underlying tone of what it's about is that the whole book is kind of like a massive question mark. You know, is the house haunted? Are the ghosts real? Or is this woman hallucinating or having some kind of a breakdown? So that's the kind of two interpretations you can take of the book. You can either look at it as a woman, a young woman desperately trying to protect her two young wards 
from a paranormal danger, a genuine paranormal threat, or a woman who's having some kind of nervous breakdown and is hallucinating ghosts. And um, either way, the ending, which I don't want to spoil, is pretty darn tragic, whatever way you go. Personally, I like to think that the ghosts are real. And the reason that the, I think the ghosts are real is because she's able to describe the individuals um, and the housekeeper knows from her description who they are. Um, and she didn't know what these people looked like. She wasn't able to say, you know, she's not seen any pictures or paintings of these individuals so she could say, you know, make this up. She described what she saw and the governess instant, the other, sorry, the housekeeper instantly recognised it as the two dead uh, previous members of staff. And that's the reason why I think personally there were real ghosts and that the threat was very real. Um, the ending is kind of left in a sort of, um, it's kind of ambiguous. Something tragic happens again, I don't want to spoil it, but it's it's done in a way where it's like you're not really even clear what's happened and you're like, wait, what? And you go back and you reread it and you're like, what? Um, I really like that and I have a feeling that the Netflix original series is going to capture that and um, that kind of like, oh. Um, but this is the perfect book for them to play around with. What they did with Shirley Jackson was perfection and I think that they are going to do just as well with this. I'm so excited for season two. Um, once it comes out I'll do a little comparison between the book and um, the movie. But yeah, um, it's it's a pretty damn good read, guys. Uh, if you're interested, I'm actually doing a gothic read-along on my Instagram. My link is down below. Every month uh, throughout the year, we're going to be reading along with each other a piece of gothic fiction, something vintage, something gothic, something horror. And this bad boy is on the list for September, I believe, um, uh, because the Netflix original is out in October. So I wanted to have it read before then. So yeah, if you want to join in with that, if you go to my channel, Bookish Marie on um, Instagram, take a look at the list. It's a really good opportunity for you guys to read those classic horrors that you've never got around to, those books that have been sitting on your shelf, the classic penguins that you've just never, you, you always wanted to read, you always planned on reading, but you never picked them up, like this one for me. This is get your bum in gear, basically. And then you can come back and we can discuss it. Is there anything better? So what do you guys think? Have you read this book? What was your opinion? Do you think the governess is crazy? Do you think that the place was actually haunted? Let me know in the comments below. Did you like it? Let me know as well. And if you know any good adaptations of it, let me know because I would love to see any already done book or movie or TV show adaptations of this. So I, I'm not aware of any. I'm sure there are some. Um, so if you know any, let me know as well because I would love, 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 love to watch those. But that's it for today, guys. As I said before, if you could please subscribe to my channel, I would really appreciate it. Hit the bell button so you get notifications and leave me a little thumbs up. Leave me a little comment. Connect with me, guys. Come on. Let's make friends and bond over creepy horror weirdness. Ta-ta for now.